Welcome back to month two of Inventing the Future. This is Exponential 201, where you are building upon the foundation of 101. That's the foundation. 201 is actually building the, uh, the structure for the building. That is Project 13. We're going to take off and blast off and watch what God is going to do through you and your church. And uh, as you know, you've read the stories that's happening in exponential churches all around. And Project 13 uh, is your path to exponential. Now, in these inventing the future meetings just want to encourage you that uh first of all you you kind of see the inventing the future kind of uh, plan the agenda that we have for you each month should start with the devotional uh so one of you guys can can start with that maybe you've already done it before you've played the video here and uh also kind of remind yourself of the vision like why are we doing this and just to remind you of some of what we've already talked about by focusing on reaching and discipling those most likely to follow Christ, we create a massive pipeline of young adults emerging as a torrent of firebrands of faith, resulting in an exponential church. So this is the deal. You're not reinventing the wheel. You're building upon principles that are being used all around the world for the churches. In fact, this is the only place I know where you can learn these best practices. You can amass them and then uh, uh, analyze them and then implement them for your church. The only place on the planet. So here you're doing something legendary. And again, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It is a different paradigm. And I applaud you. I encourage you. Keep pressing on through this quiet phase. Not a lot of people know what you're doing here, but this is why we're doing it. And so remind yourself of this. And I hope that you've uh, tied something like this, uh, this vision statement here into your church's vision statement, because, you know, this is not a, a few month thing, even a one year thing. You've got to really throw your all in it, in, into it for the next three to four to five years. That's when you start seeing the exponential payoff. You're going to see a lot of great fruit the first year and second year, but it'll explode in the future years, as you've seen with some of the uh, spreadsheets that you put together. So uh, part of the uh, what you're going to want to do is go around the table as soon as you shut off the video, or you can pause it now if you want, and talk about what is the status of each of you guys uh, in terms of what's happened this last month, uh, what did you? What were your goals? What did you accomplish? What What's the status of each member of the task force? You might already know that because you guys are talking a lot with each other and that kind of thing anyways. But just to make sure everybody's up to date on exactly what the status of everything is. And then we'll talk about what needs to happen month two. So in month two, for each of the five task force members, there's some specific things, as you may have guessed, uh, to be done. The leadership buy-in, the building the pathway, the training, the leadership, epic events, and research and measurements. So a lot of what's going to be happening month two is continuing from month one. But what, uh, don't leave it all for month two because you needed that month, month one, to gain some traction because you got to start training the leaders here uh, pretty soon. So uh, hopefully you've identified the 14 to 16 year old leaders already, those of you that are in that process, uh, in, in the middle of that part of the plan. And so I want to um, just remind you of the implementation process here. We're still in the quiet phase. So you don't be, you know, telling it from the mountains. Don't be shouting it for everyone to hear yet. Okay, we'll be going to the public phase first. But the quiet phase gives you something worth talking about. This is the plans. We've thought this through and so forth. Now, one of the things I'm going to encourage you to do uh, during this uh, during this Inventing the Future, if you have not done this yet, is on uh, number five, uh, the, where, where you talk about the uh, all the measurements and the, the logistics and all of that, is I'm going to encourage you to take the 10-year uh, plan, the 10-year template, that spreadsheet, and I want you to take some time to really wrestle through that, okay? Because everybody needs to be kind of on the same... Um, wavelength. Not that you have to agree on the 10-year goals, but they all ratchet back to what are the goals this year. And you're going to compete against yourself after the first year, you'll see. So for example, on that, if you remember that, that template and that spreadsheet, you're going to really uh, figure out, you should, have, you should know by now what your uh, footprint is. How many 13-year-olds are in your footprint? How many 12 to 14-year-olds are in your footprint? What are the schools? And then have some conversations. You can dream a little bit, but be realistic. 
have some conversations about, well, what percentage of those guys do we want in the room? What present uh, for the big Epic 13? And then the second Epic 13 event, what, how many of those, what percentage of those? And then kind of drill down. What percentage of those do you think will come to Christ? And then what percentage of those will um, join small groups, the connect group, the pathway that you're putting together? And like set some goals. There might be faith goals. You've never done it before. You've got to start somewhere. I put some uh, percentages in there. Like if you, got, if you get 10% of the footprint and you got half of those, or, uh, or, or half of those committing to Christ that, that come to your building and then half of those um, joining small groups, that's just a starting point. Uh, you've got to put your own, what is your church membership, you know, your starting church membership, uh, what are the actual numbers, and then fill it out for the next 10 years and play with the numbers a little bit and pray over them and, and look at them and, and say, go around the table. Is this all, all numbers we can agree upon? You know, and you don't know what it's going to be. You're going to have your faith goals out there. We're all going to work hard. And both from the how many are going to come to the first epic event and then how many are um, going to come to Christ at that first epic event and then how many are going to come to the... the the small groups, you know, that night and then the following week and the first month at the in the small groups, you you don't know what those are going to be, but you got to put your faith out there and then work hard to accomplish that and pray hard to accomplish that. So, I just want to uh, encourage you. Part of this time, you might take a whole hour to talk about what that whole ten years looked like, and it's all built on what the first year looks like and assuming you have at least as much productivity the second year you get a little bit better the third year the fourth year the fifth year a little bit more efficient because you're getting smarter at what you're doing and that's you'll begin to uh, see how this exponential machine will cause you to not just explode in numbers but you'll be so excited because you're creating a pipeline of mature 20 21 22 year olds you realize in 10 years the 13 year olds are going to be 23 half of the people you brought to Christ will be over 18 over the next 10 years, you realize that because they're just all growing up all the time. So you focus on the 13 year olds, but then you keep focusing on the pipeline as they're getting older and older. And what you'll see is that in 10 years, half of those that are coming to Christ are already adults in your church. They've gone away to college. Maybe they're going to college in town, but they're rock solid, man. They're the future of your church. So uh, leadership buy-in, task force number one is make sure that all the leadership groups have all the key dates from the blueprint that they've all be communicated to them. They've got them on their calendar. They're praying about them and that kind of thing. So um, you're building vision in them for the process. So you go back and you share some of the, the, the vision uh, statements with them that, like we've just talked about here a moment ago so that, so that it's real clear. In fact, this might be a, a slide that you want to show uh, to yourselves and to your leadership uh, members again and again and again. This slide right here, just keep showing it to them again and again and again. And so that we, it gets down in their soul that can memorize it. It Maybe it's a an addendum to your church vision. So this is, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to do it, by focusing on reaching and discipling. So I'm just telling you that you want this not just to be a plan, not just to be, hey, you're doing this and you're doing this, but everybody at every level feels the, the passion and the vision that's burning inside you, and they can articulate it as well. So we're not just, hey, let's try to figure something out. We're using best practices and principles from those best practices and then interpreting them for our town, our city, our suburb, that kind of thing. So I would um, one of the other things I would do with leaders if I was you, pastors, is pick a case study and read through it or have each of them read through, take five or ten minutes read through uh, a case study when you're meeting with your leaders next and then discuss a case study with them or have everybody kind of uh, pull out what they thought was very interesting about uh, the different case studies. So you want to begin to fill them. You don't have to take them through the whole classes, but you can maybe show them some of these videos that you've watched in 101 or 201 or some of the case studies uh, and uh, that have come from my dissertation so that they realize this is not just a kind of an airhead thing that you dreamed up, but there's a lot of reason for hope for success. Okay, building the pathway, a task force member, is it finish, if you haven't yet finished, welcome to the family, the first four weeks, you gotta finish that because the next guy, the leadership training pathway uh, guy is gonna have to start taking his leaders through the first four weeks. So that should be done and you should be working on the first trimester. And, um, so one, one of the things I just want to just encourage you to think about is we kind of have it divided. The who's developing the pathway, the 
progress from 13 to 14 to 15, like where are they going? And then the leadership pathway. And it's gonna be kind of interactive, but you need to think about who really owns the group process. Once groups start, like making sure their groups are functional, they're healthy, they're smart, and, uh, in, in terms of they're accomplishing what you really have intended for them to accomplish and owning the process. So it's not just, hey, they're all meeting, oh good, they're meeting. It's not enough that people are meeting. You gotta know the quality and the content, what's happening in those meetings, that people are having a life-giving time during the, uh, those times. So the leadership training, you should have rec uh, recruited and finished recruited your 14 to 16 year olds. We call it class one. L1, and then begin this month your regular meetings with a, a weekly meeting where you're having them go through the first month of Welcome to the Family. And if you don't have that developed yet, you can use it for free off of our Pathway to Freedom curriculum. You can download those. So at least that's something you can start with, okay? And let's see, what else do we have you doing here? Uh, your You've set a time when and where to meet. You begin to vi uh, build a vision into them uh, what Project 13 is really all about. So you're, you, you may be showing them some of these videos. You're, you're showing them you know, the, the why are we reaching 13-year-olds because they're most likely to come to Christ because you can show them some of the data and that kind of thing. And so they're going to feel they're 14, 15, 16 like they really have an opportunity to shape like little brothers and sisters in Christ as they come to Christ, okay? So the next... Task force member is the epic events for 13 year olds. And by now you should have a clear theme, a clear name, and I would call branding of the event. Like this is what it's gonna be called. Um, this is some of the artwork. You should have secured sponsorship for the big uh, gift or giveaway that you're going to do. And uh, you got calendar, you should have calendar tools deployed for when all of the marketing is going to begin for these things. At the same time, you should have a planning timeline for the content. If you're developing videos or dramas or whatever, the content development timeline should be uh, in process as well as the marketing timeline. They're two different timelines because you're going to soon uh, be having to have rehearsals uh, four weeks or so in advance uh, going through the timeline. Uh, and so that everybody that uh, is a part of the event or pushing buttons or, you know, rolling in videos or playing in the band, they're all really queued up on what's uh, going to happen. And when we say epic, it's got to be epic, okay? And uh, in terms of uh, the impact that it makes. So it's epic because there's a lot of people there. It's epic because there's great worship. It's epic because there's a fantastic message that is interactive in nature and, you know, video uh parables as it were or are uh, uh, ways of depicting the message and then a great you know altar ministry time people go slap your mama god's in the house this is awesome and so you're you're planning like that and you're thinking with that uh, in in mind and then finally the last task force the research measurements and logistical uh, person now as i already mentioned you're you're setting goals take some time during this uh inventing the future meeting to really fill out that 10-year spreadsheet and in order to do that you will have had to fill out some of the other spreadsheets in terms of your total footprint and all that kind of thing but really wrestle over this and um, uh, uh, f fill in that 10-year planning template and well, I want to just encourage you to each uh, discuss what you're planning to do this next four weeks uh, what your goal is and, and what challenges you might have getting there uh, somebody around the table might have a way of helping you through a challenge, a roadblock, uh, helping you with research, helping you with, uh, they might know something that you don't know, that kind of thing. So uh, you want to, in this quiet phase, you're doing all the planning. As we talk, each task force has its own planning. And the only one that's talking much is, you know, the leadership, uh, which is the pastor, getting all the groups of leaders and, and or staff members involved. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. This is month two. You're on your way. We got a, another month or two of the quiet phase, and then bam, the world is about to hear about something brand new in your city from your church that's not just going to impact your church. It's going to impact the history of Christianity because we're praying that thousands of churches around the world are going to be doing what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm.